Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Welcome to my show here. We're going to be doing uh, some clouds tonight. So I'm going to show you four different ways of doing clouds. And um, if this is something that you've struggled with and you've been like, I can't do clouds, well, hopefully this will help you tonight. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. So He's been in a chat for our live show tonight. So if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Mark, he needs to stop making me laugh just before I go on air here. It's like I completely lost my train of thought there. I think I, I, think I pulled it off. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our uh, live stream show. I paint with acrylics. I didn't mention that before, but we're going to be doing acrylic painting tonight. And I'll show you live um, all the way through from start to finish. We'll be working on um, a project while I kind of also show you some techniques. Um, and Mark will give us some comic relief during yeah. that. <laughs> um, so welcome and if you are new to our channel I hope you subscribe and come back yeah. all right we're going to be doing a 12 by 12 inch canvas today um, really any size is going to work um, for this I think it'd look really cool on a super super large canvas and if you're doing it at large I'll show you a technique for um, doing that um, later um, for our colors we're going to want a little bit of black. So this is carbon black. Um, any black will do. Thalo blue, green shade. This is light thalo blue. It's just kind of a cheat color because it's already mixed up. So it's just this color plus white. Ultramarine blue, uh, quinacridone magenta, cadmium orange, and cadmium yellow light. And then I've got an unbleached titanium, titanium white, and a zinc white. And then here I've got gloss glazing liquid and a matte medium. So um, I'll show you kind of the difference. Or They're, they're actually pretty, pretty much interchangeable. Um, so just some sort of a medium will kind of help us a little bit if you've got one. So, all right, let me, um, let me see my palette cam is off a little there. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. And then as far as brushes go, okay, so there's going to be four different ways we can do it. You can do it with a, um, um, can you switch over? Thank you. Um, you can do it with a sponge. So I'll show you how to do it with a sponge. And that's for the larger canvases. You'd probably want to use a sponge. They come in really large sizes. Um, and so I've done whole wall murals with these kind of sponges um, doing clouds. Um, another way of doing it is just like straight up with a um, filbert brush or a regular brush and doing a little bit more like um, bulky, I want to say, like kind of... Um, more what, what is the word I'm looking for impressionistic style of um, clouds where they're not maybe as realistic but they have like a little bit of a chunkiness and like a little stylistic stylistic look to them you can still get them slightly um, realistic during doing it that way though so I'm going to show you that with with that one and then also with a mop brush so if you've got a mop brush you can I'll show you how to do it with that and then um, the last way would be um, the way I prefer doing it is with a kind of a dry brush technique combo um, kind of a hybrid of all of the different ways so um, and that with that technique you're going to want some sort of a stiff bristled brush so um, whatever not that one <laughs> whichever one you choose to use there's different ones there's a blender a different stippler this one's called a blender also and then um, this is a stiff bristled filbert from the aspen series and also the chip brushes or something like that um, that's the hog bristle brush so any of those will do for the fourth technique all right so let's get going here um we're going to start out by painting the background of this and while this dries i'm going to show you the other techniques um that you can do for clouds all right there was a question regarding the canvas okay is there a, a distinguishable difference between the watercolor canvas and the one you normally I've, use i've kind of found that i don't um i don't necessarily love the first coat on these so if i was doing it on here i probably would have started out if i really thought it through started out with a coat of paint on here let it dry completely and then kind of start because that first layer um this kind of absorbs the paint kind of differently um so I prefer the mixed media canvases, but they don't have them in this size, or at least they have been out of stock in the 12 by 12. So this was the only one that I could get was the watercolor one. 
but they're, they work fine. It's just that that first layer is kind of a little bit, sometimes goes on a little bit differently than a regular canvas. So I've wet it down with water. That kind of helps the absorption. You can also use a brush and brush it on if you want to. Um, and then just take a paper towel and kind of rub it in. Um, and you can even use a paper towel with a little bit of a damp, um, damp paint um, on it, like a little, little tint of color. And doing that will kind of tint your canvas too. You can do that. Um, beforehand if you want to but all right so we're gonna start out with this one our sky is this really lovely bright blue and usually when I'm doing skies like this I'm looking at the main colors so um, and making sure that and I'm gonna put the tiniest little bit of black on here just the tiniest little bit just to tone it Sometimes I use burnt umber, but just to kind of tone that color so that it's not quite as vibrant. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of the phthalo blue. There we go. So that's the color. So it's basically if you added a lot of white with some little bit of phthalo blue and a little bit of black, that's going to be our main color here. So I'm going to go ahead and just cover most of my canvas with this. Whoops, I got a little ultramarine blue there too. That's all right. Most of my canvas with this. There is kind of this cloud bank up here that's not got a lot of blue in it. So I'm probably just going to paint up to that area. Sometimes I'll paint the whole thing, the whole background. I'm using a two inch brush here too, two inch flat brush, but um, get a little bit more color here it seems like every time I do this I never quite get enough of this mixed up so mix more than you think you need you will want some of this color later too so make sure that you have a little bit extra when you mix it that's why I was kind of using that thalo blue the pre-mixed thalo blue because I was hoping that that would be the right color for me but it is running out already So this will be good kind of basic color. Oh man, got it in my blue. Don't want that. I gotta get that all out of there. I like shove, oh, the, shove no. the ultramarine blue down in there. Okay, there we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I dropped it right into the blue, so <laughs> it went down inside of it. I hope I got most of it out there. Okay, well we got a lot of this color now to work with. Plenty. All right, and I'm adding just a little bit of water, but this has already got water on it, and it stays kind of fluid feeling. So that's I, I if I remembered that, I probably wouldn't have sprayed it with water because I don't think it really needs it much. These canvases ha hold the moisture in quite a bit. Okay. So a little bit, but on a normal canvas, I would, I would definitely spray it with water. And I'm just going to make sure that I've got kind of soft edges. So any of these edges that are not blue, I'm going to fuzz out. And up in this upper corner, I might pick up a little bit more of the ultramarine blue and use a little bit of that up here. And then just blend it in. If these colors are wet, they'll blend nicely. I don't mind any of these streaking things that are happening. I'm kind of looking at my picture and seeing sort of the direction that I'm seeing the, my dog is dreaming back here and making noises, sorry. He's barking in his sleep. Fitz, Fitz Pickle. Chasing squirrels in his dreams. All right, getting white now, and so I'm going to have, I'm leaving this big area here that this mixed color so I can use it later, and I'm going to do white at the bottom here. And do this quickly. If you need to, if it's not covering in one coat, you can do two coats on this, but we'll, we'll probably end up painting most of this blue over. There's some areas where we won't, but there's going to be clouds over a lot of this area, and so... Um, a lot of this is going to get painted over anyways, so it doesn't have to be perfect is kind of what I'm 
the point I'm trying to make. So there we go. So we've got a nice, nice blue area here. So up in this area, I think I'm going to go ahead and just get my white and maybe a little bit of the pink. I'll just do kind of a light pink, maybe even a little bit of this ultramarine blue to make a kind of purpley purpley pink. Now, if your paint's not not feeling smooth on the palette, add a little bit of water. It should it should flow without feeling like it's tugging on your brush. If it's tugging and not really moving the paint around, then that kind of tells you your paints may be a little thick, thick. Okay, so right here where these two are meeting, this is going to be important. I'm going to make sure I don't have a ton of brush paint on my brush, but I do have enough that I can kind of go in here. This paint is still wet, and I'm just going to feather it over it, and it will it'll meet and blend out really nicely for me. Okay, make sure your blue's wet. If your blue has started to dry and you try to do this, it'll feel sticky and it'll kind of feel like your, your brush is grabbing it. And so you want to leave it alone if it's doing that, if it feels like it's grabbing and sticking. Okay, so that looks good. I'm going to set this aside. And grab my pre... Pre-painted, this is very roughly painted, so not not nearly as pretty as what we've already got going on. It's just an example board that's painted with some teal that I happen to have already. I had some teal left over uh, from another project and I painted it on here. So I'm gonna kind of just split it in four parts. Maybe go ahead and put some chalk marks here so we can, well, it's not quite but you get the idea. All right, so this is, and let's go ahead and mark it. Um, this is a, I can't think of the name right now. What am I? Sea sponge? Sea sponge, thank you, sponge. My gosh, I'm already fully in right brain. Right brain is engaged. I was thinking it was a trick question. The, I'm left like, left the left brain completely out, <laughs> out of this wild. project. Okay, so when you're using a sponge, you, you want to first of all use a use a um, protection on your hand. They have barrier creams or um, glove something because you're gonna it's messy hair that's stuck to my hand. Okay. Then you're going to wet down your brush, your sponge, until it is um, damp, but completely, um, all the moisture is completely squeezed out of it. So you don't want any moisture in there because when we're going to be um, tapping with this, it's going to, we're going to be applying pressure. And if there's too much moisture in here, it's going to splurge out all, all this water and moisture out onto your canvas, which you don't want. Okay. So, um, Mainly what I'm going to do with this is use my white. I might use another color eventually, but I'm just going to start with my white here and get it on a little area. And then I'm going to use my fingers and pinch so that I have kind of a small area that I can work with. But I'm not pinching it so hard that, um, that all of it is creating a solid shape. So I still have a little bit of this texture on there. I, can, I don't know if you can see that. But then I'm going to just tap. And I usually tend to start at the top of the um, shape of the cloud, so I'll, because that area can sometimes have these kind of little floof, floofy floofs. That's a technical term. And try to create kind of a cloudy shape. Then here at the bottom, I usually will use my finger. And, oop, I just got some on here. I don't want that down there. I usually use my finger and rub out the extra with my finger. And there you go. It's the the under color is going to show 
through where you've rubbed out the main color. And then um, you'll go back in and add just a little bit. Once that dries, go back in, get some really bright white or whatever color you're using. And sometimes I'll add two or three other colors on here, obviously. This is just an example. And then come back in here and add some really bright little areas like towards the middle or kind of towards the center of it. And that gives it a little bit of depth. See how that changed it so it looks like the cloud is coming out at us a little bit in some places. And if you get it too thick anywhere, you can just kind of use your finger and smudge it out. Super easy, great for big projects, large walls, nursery, whatever. Um, works really easy and super great for making clouds. And I do this, um, I don't know why I don't still do this. <laughs> Honestly, it's pretty, pretty fun and very, very fast. Okay. So there's our sponge. This one is the Filbert. Filbert brush. Okay. And with this one, I'm going to want some of my background color. So I'm going to grab a little bit of teal and I'm going to put out a little bit of fluid white because I tend to like to have the two colors be kind of similar, a um, little bit fluid and a little bit more um, basically the same fluidity. So if I'm using a fluid teal, I want to use a fluid white. So I'm going to mix these two together a little bit and get kind of a, a light, lighter version of the background color here and I'm going to start with that and kind of just base in my shape so a few different clouds and clouds will get smaller as they go down towards the horizon line so if you're doing like a landscape and you've got a horizon line there you're going to want to kind of do bigger clouds towards the top of the canvas and the smaller clouds toward the bottom okay so then I'm going to wipe this out that paint's still wet I'm going to get my dark color and I, I can also use my finger here. So um, just like I did before over here, I can, if I don't want to grab another bra or you know get more paint on here, I can use my finger and rub out some of that bottom area just to kind of smudge it out. Um, and you can do it on the top too if you want. Smudge out some of that color. And this is, again, is kind of a more a whimsical, not whimsical, but like more um, painterly, you know, way of doing the clouds. So they're, you're kind of seeing the brush strokes more. But we're still getting a really pretty effect, isn't it? It's really nice. I like it. I like using this. And, uh, and it depends on the kind of painting that I'm doing. Whoops, I got some of that heavy body. That's all right. I'm going to wipe most of it out. So the main thing is I'm not using a ton of paint. Really, for a lot of these clouds, I'm not going to be using a ton of paint. And that's what gives us control and makes the clouds look a little bit soft, you know. Um, I think people get in here and they put in the clouds like they're putting in... Um, anything else and really with clouds you want to back way off on the amount of paint that you've got on your brush and it can really help give you a little bit more control now this one is probably going to have the most paint on my brush because I kind of need a little bit of paint on here to kind of get it to move around and stuff but that's pretty much what I'd be doing and again the colors can change so you could be using yellows and golds or whatever um, depending on where your light source is coming from your lightest area of your cloud would be facing your light so if you've got your sun over here your light areas would be you know here maybe on the bottom of your cloud so if your light's coming from this direction or you know from above or wherever um, so you'll be able to tell on your reference photo I would say have a good reference photo if you're going to be you know painting any kind of landscapes or clouds like this will really help you out a lot got a cloud bump question okay <clears throat> they would like to know do you put the cloud bumps on the top, a certain side, or all of them? It kind of depends on the photograph. So sometimes you'll have the little bumps looking, you know, coming from below if you're looking up at your cloud. So it kind of depends on the angle of the cloud. The ones that are kind of more above us will tend to have some of the bumps at the bottom as well as the top. Um, and then the ones that are kind of farther away will look more like flat. 
cloud, you know, they'll look a little bit more flat at the bottom a lot of times because you're not seeing them from underneath and you don't see that fluffy floofiness. Um, that makes sense. Okay, so there's our second kind, Filbert brush. Again, really nice. Totally different look, though. You can see this one has a lot more texture. And this one is a lot smoother and kind of soft. So, And then the next one is kind of, a, kind of similar to this. Um, we're going to use two different colors again. I'm um, going to get some teal, though. I want the teal in the heavy body. If I can find it. There we go. Um, instead of the soft color... Well, and I don't know. I may, I may want to have this smoother. I don't use the the this brush that often to do stuff because I just, um, I just haven't. I didn't start out doing it that way, so I just really haven't practiced with it a whole lot using the mop brushes. But um, we'll do our best here to kind of show you that option. So let's do mop here. And we're going to put our color basically the same as we did before. So we're going to put our color down. We're going to have some fresh color out here for our teal. I want a little bit of fresh color and then I'm going to get my fresh white. So you're going to lay your color out with the brush. Um, And then you're going to use your mop brush. I just will dampen it just slightly. You don't want it super wet because it can get kind of soggy. But then you can kind of use it to sort of smooth out your edges, push that paint around. And it creates a very soft, almost like um, oil painted look. Um, that you can get with this without, you know, uh, that's different from this, that's different from the dry brush. And I kind of use um, a very similar um, feel when I'm doing my, and I'll show you um, the, a combination when we do our finished project. It's kind of a combination of all these techniques in some ways. Um, get a little bit more white now. Oops, I'm using this brush, but I'm not supposed to use this brush for it. Cheater. I know, I just, I just cheated. I forgot I was using the mop brush. This is more like what I do when I'm doing. It's not the mop brush. This is the mop brush that I've got right here. It doesn't really hold paint very well. It's more for pushing the paint around, mm -hmm. for kind of soft, softening the edges of the paint. Definitely. And with this, with this, you have to you have to do several layers. So it's could because it's kind of it's kind of lifting your color off when it's blending it a little bit. Um, it you'll have to come back and do several layers to build up your color. And then grab that brush again and just kind of dab it off. And then you don't have to use a, like a really big brush. Um, I can look, I can let me get a dry one and see if it how what it does. I think with the dry brush, I would this one is a different this one's a, called a black mop. With the dry one, I feel like yeah, it's gonna just pick up the color. I mean you can still kind of mop with it, but I'm I'm afraid that it would just kind of dry it out. It wouldn't really like move the paint around very much, but you get the idea. So there's the mop brush. It's a lot, really soft and blendy and very pretty, um, but it does take time to build up your layers um, because you're kind of mopping up the color as you're blending them out. Um, all right, and then the last one here is gonna be, I'll go ahead and use the Deerfoot Stippler. So this is gonna be very similar. Um, I was hoping for the stippler. And this is a dry brush technique. So stippler, dry brush, um, very similar to the sponge. So I will, <laughs> what are you laughing about? What are you goofing about over there? I was hoping for the stippler. You were hoping for the stippler? My all-time favorite. I think I let that dry out. You saved the best for last. Yeah. 
So this is the one I tend to go for. So um, I got just a tiny bit of water. It really shouldn't have a lot of water on here. This brush works better when it's dryish. Putting the color on the tip and using it just like I did with the um, sponge. So I'm gonna kind of lay my color down where I want it the brightest at the top. And then just kind of use that wet edge or the, the, the bottom edge to kind of almost like the mop brush did and just kind of push that paint around a little bit. So I'm getting kind of the best of both worlds here instead of, and I can use my finger too like I did with this one up here. So you can do it either way, but getting this stippled look gives us this kind of nice cloud shape that's got that little bit of a fluff to it you know this kind of stippled texture on this brush is and depending on how big we're doing um, you would use just the different sizes of these these all will, these will all do basically the same thing you just might have a like a little bit slightly different shape to your clouds but um, yeah okay so let's go back to our project and we'll continue it hopefully that was helpful now, for four the, different ways of right now for the ten dollar patrons there's going to be a test mm -hmm. on during thursday's show she's going to show you the four different clouds without the labels you have to tell us which one is which <laughs> okay just, just is that is that how it's going to work okay i think you should test them should test them yeah. okay i think i need a little bit bigger brush what I have here. I'm gonna grab. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and use this brush. This is a eight filbert, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in some of my bigger areas of my clouds over here. So I'm gonna get my magenta, a little bit of purple. And some of my white. So making kind of a violet color. So I'll have that for some of these clouds that are up in here. And I'm going to go ahead and just put that in a little bit darker than I have it now. And a lot of times the first couple layers of the clouds are not going to necessarily be really pretty. Um, and that's okay. So um, just trying to get a little bit darker color in over here. And then I'm going to get a little bit bigger deer foot. So I've got a, because this canvas is fairly large, I've got a 5 8 inch deer foot here. And I'm going to get my zinc white. I didn't mention the zinc white when I was doing the other clouds, but this is kind of your little... Um, secret weapon when it comes to clouds because it's transparent white so what it'll do is give you nice soft edges it it, it kind of blends out this color um, this color is wet still so it's I'm trying to kind of grab up a little bit of it when I mix this into that pink it's got a nice color now I don't this dried already so I'm gonna go ahead and put down a little bit more of this wet paint there and I'm just going to, yeah, there we go, grab it so that it kind of blends and creates a nice soft gradation of color there. And if I have some stippling here that I don't like, I can always go back in and fix it later. This is actually not quite the color that I want it to be. Um, so I'm going to add some yellows to it and things, but this is just kind of the start of getting our shapes in there, okay? But you get the idea. So this is sort of really nice kind of start here. I like what's happening. And that this edge is the edge that I'm really worried about the most because I want to make sure that it stays really soft and blended over the top of my blue here. And using that um, transparent zinc white here will help with that. It'll give me this really soft blended edge. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull it out and kind of dance that brush. I'm barely touching the brush down here on the canvas 
and it's just kind of dusting it with a little bit of color. And then if I want to, I can get some of my sky color, which, yay, it's still wet. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it's still wet. So I can go in and I can push that paint around with the, the sky color. And it'll blend just like I blended these two colors together. I'm blending a little bit of my sky color into this new color that I'm laying on top. It's just going to make it a nice really soft pretty blend for me and I'm going to darken up this corner a little bit but this is starting out really nice I think it's I'm liking what's happening here all right I'm going to get, get some more and then over here there's a little bit of like brighter white so I'm going to go ahead and get my titanium white and I'm going to get some of the unbleached titanium too and this is where the glazing medium comes in. So the glazing medium will make your more opaque colors similar to the zinc white. So it will help with the transparency of your color and make it a little bit more transparent so that you can get, see how nicely that's blending out, just like my zinc white did. Um, get some really nice transparent areas going over the top of this blue. And I started out with kind of more of the solid color right there where I wanted a little bit more of that coverage, covering that blue up a little bit more. Okay, grabbing some of that pink and just blending out my transition there where they, they meet. Okay, really nice. It's not that hard. Honestly, I feel like clouds get a bad rap. I think that they're not as hard as people... Um, make, I think if you load your brush right, if you're using the right brushes and you load them right, they're really actually quite, quite fun. I think what when people start to panic is when they, um, they have their left brain get involved. <laughs> and your left brain's going to be like, that's not a cloud. You're not doing that right the whole time you're doing this. And yeah, granted, the first few coverages may not look quite right. Um, but you're not done with it yet, you know. And so I think that um, if you kind of just trust the process and trust that the more layers that you get on here, the better, you know, the better it looks usually. Um, I mean, you can go too far. You can get it to where it's like too much paint on here. But if you kind of just slowly build up your layers and kind of let the let the process take its take its natural course here, it it can actually be really fun. So adding a little bit more of the brighter white in some of these areas where I think our sunlight's coming from this direction. So we're getting the light hitting the bottoms of these clouds and the bottom of this one over here. So let's go ahead and start this guy here. That's our big cloud at the bottom here that's got the yellows and things in it. It gets a little bit trickier when you're talking about yellow going on top of blue. So that's why I did this blue and let it dry all the way because you really don't want to try to blend yellow and blue together. You're going to get green and it can be a little bit, you know, not not so great on your canvas. Um, so just watch out for that. You can, and, and some clouds will have the, a tint of green. It's, I'm not saying it won't. Um, it's, it happens, but um, for the most part, I try to keep my yellows yellow and my blues, you know, blue. And um, right here where I've got this blue underneath, I'm going to go ahead and put white. And that way, when I put my yellow on here, it'll be a lot brighter. It won't be mixing any at all with that um, blue. Okay. And just letting the brush do the work, kind of. I'm not really even stippling. I'm just kind of pushing it around, and letting this kind of stiffer bristled brush sort of. It does a really nice job of kind of just blending out the edges, just pushing on it and letting the bristles kind of push that paint around and blend and soften up. And you can use your finger too if you want to, but you kind of get. And get the idea of what we're going for here. Okay. All right, and then we've got some dark color up here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my orange and my magenta and make this really beautiful bright red. 
color. And just depending on how much orange you use or how much of the magenta you use, you'll get varying shades and we'll probably use all of them to get our transition here. But I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just try to put some down here. I'm gonna get some white and just add a little bit of that to it just to soften it so it's not at its most vibrant when I first put it down. Okay, this can be the scary part. And you see that I've I've I'm still I'm still kind of going fairly light on the paint because I don't want to overwhelm it too quickly. So going up in here and making sure that I have nice wispy edges up here where it's going to be meeting the blue. Okay. Okay, that's good. Go ahead and wipe most of that out. And I'm gonna get some of my glaze. So I'll have a glaze now with this color and I'm gonna use it over here to add some right up here. Okay, once I put it down, I'm gonna wipe my brush off completely. That glaze is gonna help keep it from drying too quickly. And you can do this in small sections, but you gotta really work fast with this because that glaze does dry pretty quickly and I'm mopping it up. So I'm using this like a mop, mop now. I am using it and if you have a mop brush, you can grab that and use that instead. But I'm just kind of using this and it's actually a similar texture to this mop brush, um, similar kind of bristles. Um, I'm gonna kind of push that paint around and sort of dry brush that top edge there with this kind of damp. It's just slightly damp, that's all. And then I don't have any kind of blending going on here yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and this white should be dry enough now that I can use some of that yellow and get some white with it. Wipe most of it out. And I'm gonna use it to transition these two colors here. Make sure that that white is dry enough. If it's not dry, it will just lift and then you'll have a mess. So wait for that white to dry. Okay. And if I wanted to, I could leave these kind of interesting shapes that I'm getting here in my clouds, or if I want to, I can go back in and get some more of that red and kind of blend these out a little bit and make them a little softer. So it's just however, whatever look you like, honestly, it's not, I don't feel like there's a, I'm gonna fly I'm trying to land on my face. I don't feel like there's, you know, too much you can, well, I don't, I'm not gonna say that. Just. I don't wanna tempt fate and say there can't be too much to go wrong because then people will be like, well, you said that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not too much could go wrong, but. <laughs> All right. I'm just adding kind of like we did with the wispy clouds over there. I'm just adding some more sort of wispies here. And this glaze will help with the wispy parts because it just softens up the paint. It gives it a more transparent look and it really helps kind of with these areas not look so harsh. Because sometimes when you're dry brushing on here, it can kind of look like a little static. Okay. And this brush is getting a little floppy because it's all wet. So I'm just going to dry, clean it out and set it off to the side to dry. I've gotten most of my really large areas done, so I'm going to grab my smaller deer foot here. This is the 3 8 inch one. I was using the 5 8 inch there. Grab my zinc white and so started out with the filbert, doing the kind of filbert look, then kind of used this brush to soften up and blend the edges and, and kind of used it like a mop brush. So again, it's kind of the combo a lot of, of a lot of the 
techniques that we showed you on the board earlier. So it's kind of a little bit of everything I'm trying to get get the look we're going for. So I'm going to get some white, a little bit of yellow, and make sure that my paint is staying fluid too. If my paint starts to get a little too thick, it just kind of won't move. So make sure that I'm either adding glazing medium or water to my paint so that it stays fluid so I can kind of push it around, get it to blend. This is all about soft blending here. I'm going to get some magenta and some white. Just magenta and white. This one had the blue in it, so it was more purple. And we use that really soft baby pink. And some of these clouds over here. I think I want even more white. More pink. Yeah, that's pretty. And then maybe even a little bit of that unbleached titanium too. I'm gonna wipe this out because I have too much of that magenta still in there. Okay, so white, I have the pink in there. It's gonna be tinting this, taking most of that color out. And just, there we go, using it to push push and floof. Just and see how I can soften up these clouds from before. I can go back in here and just kind of go along those edges and push back some of that color so that it's not so harsh. A little bit of that lighter color between this and the sky. Look at how nice we've got soft candy colored clouds starting to form. Really pretty. Getting that soft pink. Creating it. And um, doesn't really matter what colors you're using here. Basically, you're just wanting to make sure that you've got nice transitions between all your colors. So we've got one color meeting another color. You just kind of want to have um, a buffer of the two colors mixed. So if I have my my red and my yellow here, I might want to get a little bit of the orange right there. Or my purple and my red meeting, I want a little bit of the magenta in between the two colors. So, you know, just kind of looking at your rainbow of colors, however they progress on the scale. So I'm going to mix these two colors together, the yellow and the orange, and get kind of a gold, golden orange, and get some of my glaze. I've already got plenty of color down here, so I don't really need to have this be super opaque. I might add a little bit of my zinc white to it, just to soften it slightly. Let's go ahead and transition between the yellow and the orange color here. So just going to blend over that line where those two meet and try to get them to kind of look a little softer. Nice. Nice. We're doing pretty good here. I like, I like how this is looking. I like it. Okay, getting some of the zinc white. Let's go ahead and put it over here. All right, I'm gonna wash this out. Really good. I'm making sure that I keep my brushes wet, that I've already used my sponge and everything that's setting off to the side here. I don't want them to dry with the paint in them, so. So was that last layer more of a transparent layer? Yes. Yeah. It wasn't super um, thick. It, the, the Both of these colors are opaque, though, so they do have a little bit of coverage. And if it doesn't 
if it doesn't show up as well as you want it to, then you can add a more solid, you know, depending on how, how transparent you want or how light your background is, you add more or less of the actual color, um, if that makes sense, hopefully. Um, all right, so yeah, we're almost, we're almost done with this. Um, let me see if I can get some of the sky. There we go. So we've got some of the sky blue. I'm going to get a little bit of the glaze and add that to it. And I'm just going to fill it in here. I see some areas where that first layer didn't quite cover. I'm just going to kind of go in here. And then I'm also going to go along. And this is where, like, if you have any areas where you just feel like you're your clouds got a little too heavy you can use this blue from your sky so it's always good to kind of reserve your background sky color or at least remember how you mixed it so you can re you know remake it and even if it's not exactly the same color it's fine you can just kind of add it to the areas where you do have that color so you know if I've got a blue over here that I'm trying to blend in and I don't feel like it's exactly the same match like so maybe I've got this lighter um, phthalo blue that um, isn't exactly the same color as this I can take it and add some glaze to it and then I can just brush it in in other areas of my sky. And then all of a sudden it'll it'll blend in. So just kind of blend it into the areas around. And so you don't have to have the exact same color always. In fact, your sky, your blue sky is going to have lots of different variations of tone, tonality. You're going to have areas that are darker and areas that are lighter. And so it's okay if it's not like one solid blue color. It's really not going to be one solid blue color anyways. So again, don't, I, I feel like people stress out about clouds a lot. Just try not to take a deep breath. You can do this. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> I believe you. You can do it. It's not, it's not that bad. I'm going to have tons of that paint color left over. I'm going to have to save it or do something with it. All right, so I'm going to use, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of the matte medium here with the ultramarine blue in this upper corner. And just blend that in. It's not going to go on super smoothly because I'm using this kind of brush here, but I can take my, this brush, it's just kind of slightly wet. I'm just going to quickly blend over that while it's just damp. Try to blend that in a little bit. There we go. <coughs> Maybe a little bit brighter blue up here. Yeah, I don't know why it's going out of focus there on me. You don't have any sharp edges on your mm. canvas. I'm getting some of the sky blue color, kind of blending through. And just making sure I've got kind of a nice soft blend. Just gonna use my finger and push that around. Okay. And let's go ahead and add a little bit of magenta color if I can get some is it is there any left I don't think there is maybe yeah there we go a little bit of this color in the bottom corner here just very lightly glazing and glaze is just very thin tint of color so you're not trying to cover anything you're just trying to Enhance, just layering over, just a light, transparent layer. So you can see all the layers underneath still. It just adds a little softness, a little richness of the color to the colors. All right, so let's go ahead and add just a little bit of finishing, um, finishing touches. So I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush here. This is the blender, three eighths inch blender. Gonna get a little bit of water and I'm going to mix up kind of a dark 
darkish color. There's this dark color that's kind of wandering through here in some places. So I'm going to take most of it, again, take most of it off my brush and maybe get a little bit of the matte medium here. I ran out of my glass medium on my canvas, so make sure this is dry. Do not do this on top of a wet canvas because this brush will, will scrub your paint off. It's got a lot of texture and it'll just scrub it right off. So I'm just going to use my finger and push that around. Okay. I think I want a little bit more of a bluish, maybe get a little bit of this um, thalo blue with it. I need to clean off my palette. I've got no room to work. Let's get it all off of there. Ooh, what a mess. Okay. That's going to be fun to try to get that razor blade off. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I know. It, it's coated. Okay, I'm going to put out more white. We got a bunch of general questions. A bunch of what? General questions. Okay. Do you want to save them? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not done with this yet. Okay. Put out some more of my glaze. But you can see how the matte, I don't really feel like the matte medium and the, gla the glazing medium are, are much different. The matte medium will not have a, as much of a shine, so it will go on more matte, as the name implies. Okay, I like that that phthalo blue mixture with the magenta, so I think that that's going to get me closer to the color that I want. A little bit richer purple. It's a little bit more neutral than this one was, too, because it's got that phthalo blue has more green in it, and green and the magenta are opposite, kind of on the color wheel, so it'll be a little bit more of a neutral, neutralizing color using it. And this can be scary when you've got all these really pretty clouds, and then you're like, ah, adding this dark tone to it, so I'm going to get my glaze and just kind of slowly build it up so it's not so dark at first. Pushing that paint around with my glaze. It's picking up that magenta. That magenta that I had put down a minute ago is not dry. So it kind of causing some spots to form. Which I don't want to happen. And I want to make sure that I'm not going all the way to the top edge of my clouds. Or if I do, that I really like soften it up and like smudge those out so it's not a solid line there. Okay, so this is looking good. Got kind of an interesting interesting going ons here. really dry brushing here. So my brush is dry, my paint is wet. Obviously dark, but that's basically what you're going to be doing with the dry brush. You're just kind of pushing that paint around and trying to get that soft blend to happen. It's, it's, you have very little paint on your brush, very little paint. If you have too much paint, it does not work. It just kind of pushes the paint around instead of blends. Adding a little bit more of the magenta color here. And then I need to just transition to the more white, right? So I'm going to get that color and add some white to it. And then I'm going to come right up underneath it and just push it up over that area. These colors are still wet because I just put them down. 
if they're dry, that's fine too. It, you may just have to add a little bit of the other color back in. I'm gonna grab some of the blue from my sky. And in some of these areas where I want the blue to kind of be peeking through, I'm gonna push that up in there. And then just soften that up. So see how now nice and soft that is now? It went on and it was like really obvious, really. So like right here, we still have really obvious transition. There's no transition there, right? Yet. So we just need to get, what's our next color down here? It's the magenta. So I'm gonna get the magenta. I'm gonna add a little bit of white. That will make the magenta more opaque. So it'll cover up the other color. And the white will also kind of soften the look of everything a little bit too. Not too much white, just a little bit. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of this red too because it's it's not fully magenta. It's got a little bit of red in it. Okay, so then I'm gonna go, so I brought that darker color down just a little bit lower than I wanted it to be. And then I can blend back up over it. This should be dry, hopefully. Fingers crossed it's dry because it's this will lift it if it's not. Yeah, it looks like it's doing okay. You can just test it lightly by scrubbing it just a little bit, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and push that up here. I feel like this cloud needs to come up a little higher. Just the whole thing. A little bit of that purple. solid so I'm just gonna try to kind of soften up around my edges see it's trying to lift right here because I put my color down over an area that was drying okay there we go we're just gonna have to let that set for a minute and you kind of have to mess it up before you can make it better again if that makes sense so I had to kind of mess up my layers. I had a really pretty thing going on, right? We had really pretty soft layers, but to give them depth and have this really darker color in here, I did have to kind of mess them up a little bit and add this color. So I'm having to blend this color in and it's just gonna take me a minute to get back to where I want it to be. So I'm gonna get some perp some orange and add it to that magenta. And I'm just gonna push that color up in. So I wanna get some really bright red right there and get the magenta and my orange. Use that bright color. And it's okay to have kind of areas that are solid as long as they're blended in. So we can have solid areas in our cloud here. Just wanting to blend them into the colors around it. I'm gonna get a little bit of the zinc white and use that over this just to soften that up. I feel like it's getting a little dark. So using that zinc white, which is transparent, it'll add a little softness to that orange area. That paint is still wet, so I'm able to kind of blend in here and make changes to it while it's still soft. That area was starting to dry there, so I'm having to kind of scrub it. But okay, so there we go. Getting some nice bright clouds now. Getting more, more titanium white or more zinc white, I mean. And now getting my yellow, which is the bottom color. So just went in order and just adding 
each of these colors and blending them back into one another until I get to the bottom here and then I can add zinc white to the bottom if I need to if I feel like it's not blended out but man we've got a rainbow going don't we <laughs> now and I'm going to go ahead and add some softness in here soft red just lighten that up a little bit there's it's not it's not a solid one color to the next always sometimes there's a little bit of other things happening in here getting my zinc white here going along the edges here with the zinc white to Kind of soften it up. Okay, I think I'm pretty close to liking this. So I'm going to get my titanium white, a little bit of my glaze, and I'm going to find my areas where I'm seeing that really bright sunlight hitting the clouds. And we did this area before with the unbleached titanium, which has a little bit of that kind of a yellow tint to it. So now when we go over it with this white, it's going to really pop. We always leave the white for very last in these kind of clouds when we've got a lot of color because that white will really bring out all that brightness and you want to save it. It's your last little sprinkle of seasoning on the end of the painting here. Look at how pretty that is. Really soft. The glaze helps make it soft. So you, if you don't have glaze, you can add water, but basically you're just wanting to add a little bit of a, a little bit of transparency, a little bit of fluidity to your paint, just so that it's going over the top of your background color, a little bit softer. Okay. And I hope that people are enjoying this and get something out of it because I think that I think this is probably the most comprehensive cloud video I've ever done. I've never really just done just clouds this way before, so hoping people are going to enjoy it. They are. Share it with somebody, if you know anybody that needs to have some help. With clouds. With clouds. Yeah, I can't help with other things. Sorry. If they're like needing help on how to make ice cream, it's probably not very useful. No. Yard work. Not not the person for that. No, no, not I that. might know a few things about cucumbers. I've been learning. I've <laughs> <laughs> been watching a lot of cucumber videos this year. I didn't know you pruned your cucumbers like you do tomatoes. They've got suckers just like tomatoes do. Who knew? I sure didn't. Somebody. Well, I know and now, now. And now you do. Who do? I do. Do what? <laughs> so, okay. So just going through here and softening up the edges. These were kind of a little harsh still. Adding my white. If I want it really bright add my white. These are not like super bright in these areas, but I'm adding a little bit more brightness than what I'm seeing. Just want them to be a little bit more drama dramatic as opposed to traumatic. <laughs> we don't want traumatic clouds. <laughs> we like the drama in our art, not in real life. Keep the drama to the canvas. Mark's not even listening to what I'm saying. I'm trying to figure out what movie that's from. <clears throat> what movie? Well, that's from Bobby Soxer, The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer. From Cary Grant. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I should have asked you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now I can pay attention again. Okay. 
and action. That's fine. It's too late. <laughs> you lost. You, you ruined it. <laughs> some squiggles and then like to finish it off you can kind of just use what's left on your brush to just kind of add some like random random squiggles here and there oops there's some here I missed this has got some light underneath here over here I think your transitions is what is most important here. It's just getting these blends well done well, you know, soft blends, and just do your layers as many times as you need to to get them soft. Keep adding your background color if you if you get it too solid and you feel like you know your clouds are looking heavy. Just add more of the background blue, just soften up around the edges of them get that blue and just kind of push it back up into some of these areas to soften over the top it really helps and your cloud can go from kind of looking a little sad to looking really nice just by adding a little bit of that blue over the top in some areas here and there see how that's really softening up that corner it's looking a little solid right there so let's go ahead and just use this blue to just along the edge, just not too far in. But look how nice now that that's looking. It's really soft and blendy looking, very cloud-like, really pretty. Really, really nice. All right. Um, yeah, I feel like that this is a little heavy in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to lighten up that whole area of my cloud. I'm just gonna get some of my titanium white, a little bit of my yellow, a little, little bit of yellow, and water. And I'm just gonna kind of lightly dust over this, just kind of glaze over it with the white. It'll kind of lighten up this whole area. I could leave it bright like this if you want, but I kind of want it to be a little softer looking. It's just looking a little harsh. You see how nice that is now. A little bit softer. And you can tint this however you want. So if you want your cloud to be more yellow, you can add a little yellow to this. If you want your cloud to be more pink, you add a little pink. So once you get your clouds in and you like the look of them, then you can always, you can do any number of tints over them to kind of alter the color just slightly. So I could go in with a little bit of my orange here and some of my glaze. I just did my yellow, so I have to be careful because I don't want to lift off that yellow that I did, but I can add just a little bit of that brighter brightness back in. Now that I have kind of a light base, this orange will be a little softer looking. Really pretty. I'm going to add a little bit of orange up in here, just on the edge where the light's hitting it. And then let's go ahead and darken up this corner here. I forgot to darken that up when we added our dark to our, I need to get a different towel that keeps getting in my paint. <laughs> I'm gonna get some of that Thala Blue and Quinacridone Magenta mixture. I'm wiping that out so I don't have a ton on my brush. And I'm just gonna use it up in the corner here and darken up that corner. Again, this is just a glaze, so I didn't add any glazing medium to it, but it, that's basically what it is. It's just a thin layer of paint, just tinting and darkening up my cloud. I'm just going to 
to use my finger to push it around. Okay, pretty happy with that. I think I'm gonna call that pretty much done. I might, I'm gonna do just a little bit more of this color up here. Put the color on darkest and then just kind of fade it out into the brighter blue. Use my finger. You can use a damp paper towel. There we go. I'm gonna darken up this corner too. See a little bit darker. It's kind of a little vignette effect. Probably used a vignette filter in the photograph to kind of darken up the corners. But I like that look, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it too. Just light dusting a color. The paint's nice and transparent, so it's not super thick. I'm just lightly darkening up my corners. I feel like I get too much on there, I can come back in and wipe part of it off. I think I'm gonna get a little bit of my blue, my blue sky, and get a little bit of that purple and kind of just mix them together. There we go. I want a little bit softer color right there. Again, using this like a mop brush, just wiping it off, kind of using that damp brush to push the paint around. Get a little bit more of that blue. Softening up any rough edges. So now I'm just gonna kinda look at it and see if there's anything that I'm seeing that I don't like, but I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna get my titanium white and Go in here and dark and brighten up the bottom of these clouds. I, I did these ones up here, but I didn't do these ones down here. So just adding a little bit of bright, bright white. And I can kind of push it up into the cloud too itself if I want to. Oh, I've left the glove on this one hand, I didn't notice. start doing questions if you want. Close <clears throat> enough to the end now. All right. Well, we'll start there at the beginning. Uh, the first one was, do you know if there is a golden paint color that is close to red violet? Um, yeah, the red violet is um, quinacridone violet. Quinacridone violet. If you look at Red Violet's ingredients list, like on here, this is a Red Violet, Australian Red Violet. If you look up PV19, it, it's it's the, it's uh, quinacridone violet. Okay. So. Good job. Okay, one for one. Doing good so far. Mm -hmm. On to the next question. Is there an Aliquitex equivalent to Golden's glazing liquid? Um, I don't know of one because I, Golden adds an extender, and I don't know of any of the Liquitex ones that have an extender in it. The matte medium has an extender, too, that I was just using. I didn't realize that the matte medium has an extender, but it does. So the one that I was just using, the Golden matte medium. Um, and I, I don't really, I, I don't really feel like it dulled down my colors too much. I, I tend to not use matte medium because it has 
opacifiers in it to make it matte. Um, they add like little white particles to the paint, to the medium. And I've always been leery of doing that, but I think that that's a suitable, you know, substitute for glazing medium if you don't have glazing medium. But I wouldn't use a glazing medium from a different brand that doesn't have an extender in it because glazing medium dries almost instantly without the medium in it. Go. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's good. Mm-hmm. That it earned you to go into the bonus round for the final question. <laughs> For double the points. Okay. <laughs> and this was asked while you were doing the clouds with the deer foot stippler. Okay. And so they would like to know, would a flat stippler work as well? Yeah, I didn't use it, but this would work as well. It As long as, you know, as long as you kind of did the same kind of soft soft loading and that kind of thing, yes, it, it should work just fine. I'm going to get a little bit of yellow in these clouds over here. That makes sense. Yes, it does. Okay. I just don't have any prizes to give you in okay. case you got them all right. <laughs> this is a soft yellow that I used down here. I'm just going to use it to kind of transition up here. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. You could add birds to it, or there's a plane in the reference photo. I'm not going to bother with that, but today was all about the clouds. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can do any number of things from here if you want. Add any kind of fun stuff in here to finish it off that you want. I might, I might add a few birds. Should we add birds? I don't know. We'll ask, ask the audience. We'll let them decide if we want birds or not. No, no birds. Yeah, Mark's like, I want to go. No, because you've done, you've done paintings with the birds in them. Right. Recent, not too recently, but like with the yeah. last couple of months. Yeah. And I think Fatih is agreeing with me. <laughs> uh, somebody would like to know, yeah. is there a color to get Shh. that brilliant orange Shh. in there? This color? Oh, the brilliant orange. Yeah, I, I had it before. I, I, I What I would have to do is add more white. I just, I, I had it before I added that purple. Um, let's try it. We can, we can try to get it back. Um, you could add a, like a fluorescent color. Like if I added some of that, well, let's go ahead and try it. We'll just add a fluorescent, like luminous red here and see, cause that will definitely do it. But if I had more of the white, cause when, when I, oh, when I first put it on here, I had the white underneath and the color was a little bit more vibrant than it is now so um instead of doing that i'm gonna because i'd have to redo that whole cloud let's just try it with this luminous red this will definitely add and i'm gonna use it sparingly because i don't want to overdo get a little bit on there just a little bit i'm gonna put it where i want it brightest so kind of in the middle of my cloud here Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, I'm glad they suggested that. I like it. That's nice. Good idea. I did need that. Look how pretty that is. Nice. So that's luminous red. That's the um, Holbein acrylic. Uh, thank you, Carol, for sending that to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, this one is fluorescent red, which would probably work as well. The golden fluorescent red or fluorescent orange or fluorescent pink. Any of those would probably do fine for something like this. So, yeah, this is looking really nice with this fluorescent, man. That's making it pop. Use it sparingly. Do not overdo. It wants to take over. (laughs) It wants to take over the world. Let's add a little bit of water. I don't have my glaze out anymore. I'm just going to kind of glaze it at the bottom here. Just kind of smudge it out. You do not want to mix your fluorescence with any other colors because they will not be fluorescent anymore. But man, they're pretty. But you really can't get that super bright color any other way. 
I mean, we, we got a, it was brighter, brighter, but not this bright <laughs> mm -hmm. before. And this is definitely closer to what I'm seeing in the photo for sure. So I think that this is nice, nice addition. Okay. There we go. And I could add, I'm, I'm going to add like a little, 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 little bit, little bit up here. Just the slight, slightest dusting of it. Okay. Just catching the, catching the light. Really pretty. Okay, hope you guys try this. Try clouds. Don't be scared. They're fun. You can do it. Thanks for watching. Mark's doing something over there. Oops, he's doing super chat. I'm going to add some more white down to the bottom here while he's doing that. It just came in. So Woo! Hot off the presses. Nice. Super chat. Nice. That's okay. All right, here we go. Boom. The super chat just came in from Karen. She says, thank you Aww. for another incredible tutorial. I feel more confident in painting clouds now. Yay. Yay. That's awesome. That's the whole idea. I'm so glad to hear that. That makes my day. Mm -hmm. That's great. We had a some health scares with our my parents <laughs> today. But we got a really good report just before we came on air, so I'm in a good mood. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be the most depressing show ever <laughs> earlier today. I was like, I, I hope Dad gets a good report. My <laughs> Dad's been <laughs> battling cancer, and so thank goodness he's doing okay. We had a good report today. So it's a good day, and thank you. That just made it even better. We enjoy getting to share these videos with you guys, and we appreciate you stopping by, watching live, sharing, chatting with us, sharing the videos with your friends, painting along, all of that stuff. It's really been a blessing in our lives. I hope we've been a blessing for you guys, too. I really get, enjoy getting to do these videos for free for you guys, and we have a bunch of patrons that help. Yes. help with that and help keep our videos free on YouTube. They help support us. YouTube doesn't pay us a whole heck of a lot, right. <laughs> especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. They it's like it's like we get more views and it goes down. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not definitely definitely not on YouTube for the money. <laughs> but we are for the fellowship and the and the uh, camaraderie and yes. getting to meet you guys and mm -hmm. uh, share our lives with you and share our videos with you and we just really appreciate you all so if you're interested in patreon or the bonus videos and stuff i'll show you real quick what we did this weekend on saturday we worked on a our five dollar level folks um we did a video with them of, uh, puppies this is big sur waterfall um can't remember the name, McWay, McWay Falls um, in California. So anyhow, really fun. Uh, about three hours, something like that. A little over two hours. Can't remember uh, how long. Two, it's about two and a half. Two and a half hours. Yeah. So it wasn't actually as long as I expected it to take. It was. It was actually fairly easy, I would think. So. Um, Yeah. And we have all kinds of different, uh, more, more difficult, longer videos on my Patreon um, page. Things that wouldn't make sense to do on YouTube because <laughs> it just wouldn't get the views or the, you know. Uh, yeah, anything. YouTube doesn't like the three, four, five. I mean, the the paintings that she does on Thursday, she does it oh, you know, each Thursday for a month, so it can be right. six to eight to ten hours. Yeah, this depending. is the ten dollar level video that we're working on, and we'll do two more sessions to, before it's finished. It's gonna have a garden with all kinds of different flowers and things, and um, so it's it's still in the early early stages, <laughs> still in the ugly stage. And but. in the Sunday video, you mentioned that there's new brushes. 
Yeah, from yeah, um, yes. If you go to my Blick list down in the description of this video, Blick has all of the new. Um, they have these short series brushes in Aspen. Um, these ones. There's one more. Oh, there's a fan. I think it's these ones. There might be one that I'm missing. I can't remember. Um, yeah, there's a flat. There's a flat one I'm missing. Where is it? Where are you? Anyhow, I can't find it. Um, I may not have put it in here with these ones. I don't know. Okay, anyhow. <laughs> There's a short flat, too. It's it's a short, right. Oh, that it's is bugging me. Oh, it's bothering me. me. I cannot stand it when I can't find things. <laughs> that is like my number one pet peeve, Mark can tell you. So, anyhow, short dagger, short round pointed, short oval filbert, short fan, and short angle bright. And then there's, again, a short bright that's somewhere around here that I've lost. So, um, anyhow. <laughs> yeah. But you I'm can gonna, check that out at the Blick store. I will, yes. They, they're in my Blick list in the recommended brushes um, on there. And then if you are um, uh, wanting just to kind of get started with acrylics, there's a, like, it's called required <laughs> list that has um, basically all the basic brushes and paints that you could use to get started with acrylic painting, um, paints and canvas and that kind of thing. Um, if you're interested, down in the description. Um, so yeah, and also there's down in the description the newsletter sign up um, or link to my website thankfulart.com, and then the um, Patreon links as well. So. Yeah. And the brush guys, yes. The brush guys don't have these ones yet, but they have uh, they have um, uh, two different sets that are for um, specialized just for my students, um, an intermediate and a beginner list of brushes, and they're very very discounted, probably cheaper than you can find anywhere else. I would I would say so. Um, yeah, and use the code Angela Fine Art at the brush guys if you're going to be doing that. You get an extra five percent off, and it lets them know that. We sent you. All right, that's it. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us. That was a lot of information there at the end, but <laughs> hopefully, we <laughs> hopefully valuable information <laughs> for somebody. We'll see. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you next week on next Tuesday. I can't remember what we're painting, but it'll be hopefully something good. Um, next week is going to be the teapot. Oh. Fun. Yay. Paint flowers. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Click Angela's picture and subscribe and Yeah, hit it'll the send reminder. you a reminder. Yeah. Um yeah, if you subscribe to our channel. So yeah. all right. Thanks guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time. Bye.